All right, in this video we're looking at comparing two population variances using a hypothesis testing procedure. And what I've done is listed the first four steps of that procedure on the board here. I'm going to talk about that setup now. So, first thing you're going to notice is that um, our claim has the symbols for population variance here, which is probably obvious since we're testing the population variances, but it's going to be a change for us, right? So when we go across and look at our previous procedures that we learned, we always had a symbol for either the mean, which was mu, or we had a symbol for the proportion, which was rho. Now we're looking at sigma squared for the population variances. These subscripts just indicate for population 1, for population 2. Remember, sigma squared means variance. Sigma squared means variance. Okay, good. So that's the first thing. The next thing I want to address probably before we get into this any further is um, why do you want to test the population variance in the first place? Well, for one thing, in the manufacturing world or in the service industry, having a smaller variance is a mark of quality. So we certainly are interested in the variance. That's an important quantity. Um, in terms of what we've done in the past in this course, we certainly looked at the independent t-test and had this question when we had a small sample size of whether we could assume that two population variances were the same or not. And so this testing procedure would help us to determine that. We could go out and collect data to run a particular test to know if the population variances are the same or not. And then once we finish that, when we go back to do the independent t-test to compare the means, we wouldn't just be going in there making a blind assumption. We'd have some basis for the reason for choosing the idea that they're the same or the idea that they're different. Okay, so either way, that's why we would want to do this procedure. From here, how we get HO and HA is pretty much the same as we've always done. You, know, you notice that, of course, this has greater than or equal to in it, so I've made that my HO. But you might say, well, wait a second, there was no 1 up here. How did this 1 get here? And why is this a fraction? Well, what I did is I divided the right-hand side of this expression by this guy, right? Sigma squared sub 2. I divided the right-hand side by it so that I was left with 1 over here. And, of course, I have to put it on the other side now as well. I can't just do it to one side. So that becomes greater than or equal to 1, and if I do it down here, it becomes less than 1. So HO and HA then are formed in that manner. The reason why we do this is because this is actually how we're going to view the hypothesis testing procedure. If this ratio is in fact greater than or equal to 1, we'll basically say that HO can stay put, it can stand as being true. If it turns out that this ratio is less than 1, then it's going to indicate that perhaps HA is in fact true, right? All right. Then we'll have some data that we need to use to solve the problem or to help to conduct the hypothesis test. Um, we'll have sample sizes from each population that we're looking at. We will have a sample variance or standard deviation, which we will square to get a variance, right? And then we'll have a significance level. Sometimes the problems will throw in extra information that we don't need, like the sample means. They could do that, but we don't care about that, right? Don't need it for this procedure. Then we take that information and we plug it into a test statistic formula. It turns out the test that formula has a symbol F before it. It's not a t-test, it's not a z-test, this is an f-test. So it's a new distribution that we haven't seen before. The f-distribution kind of looks like a skewed bell curve. It starts over here at zero and it goes on and on there into infinity, but it gets a long skinny tail in the end. So a big bump here up front and then a long skinny tail. There's not just one F distribution, there are several F distributions. Like the T distribution, it depends on the sample sizes involved. But um, for our purposes, we'll say that this is a visual representation of the F distribution. Either way, um, we're going to form this very simple ratio for the test stat. That's a very easy test stat formula. In fact, it's probably the easiest test stat formula we've seen. You just divide the two sample variances with a very important rule that you put the larger sample variance on top in every case. So when you do the problem here, you notice that according to this claim, it's population 1 that's supposed to be greater than population 2. So we're assuming here that the sample variance here is greater than that one. Of course, we want to confirm that by actually looking at the data when we have it. And then we form the ratio in that way. You may say, well, why do we do that? Why do we have to do that? Well, you have to do that because it turns out our F tables, where we get the critical value from later on, those tables only show a right tail, so it's important that this ratio is always greater than 1. If it isn't, we're not going to be able to use the tables to help us get the critical value in the next step. So after the test stat, of course, we have to do the critical value step, right? So the critical value That says critical, by the way. Sorry for my sloppy handwriting. But the critical value here is essentially the cutoff score where we separate the rejection region from the do not reject region, right? 
do not reject HO versus the reject HO area, right? So that critical value, that critical number is something we need to learn how to find. Now it comes from the F distribution, so you do not know how to do that yet. We are going to learn how to do that in the smaller problem videos, so you'll see um, we work out several of those so you know how to find that critical F value. But the important thing is we're going to get it from an F table which is going to be found in your textbook. You're going to look up the critical value based on the alpha and based on these two sample sizes here. It actually has two degrees of freedom. This sample size and this sample size. Then you look that up, you get your critical value and you know where your rejection region begins. Okay, now once you have that, once you've solved for the critical value, you compare the test stat to the critical value and you form your initial conclusion. That hasn't changed. It's still the same thing. Do you reject HO or not? So you get the initial conclusion after that. And when you're done with the initial conclusion, you will form your final conclusion. And that's again the same kind of idea, right? Same wording choices and everything. So, you know, in the final conclusion, we either say that we reject the claim or we do not reject the claim. I'm saying that because the claim is HO, and we use the terminology reject in those scenarios, right? So in the final conclusion, we either say we reject this or we don't reject this. And of course, you know, filling in the details, we'd say either we reject the claim that the variance for the first population is greater than that for the second, or we do not reject the claim that the variance is greater than that for the po than for the population for the second. So either way, regardless, the bottom line is, is that the procedure has the same seven steps that we've been used to doing, except for there's some changes. There's notation changes here and here. There's some different set of data that's important for us. We have a very different test stat. It has a very different distribution, so our critical value comes from a different place. But essentially, it's still the same idea, test stat, critical value, make a comparison, form the initial conclusion, and then word your final conclusion. And once you've done with that, you will conduct a successful test for population variances to see if they're the same or not. Of course, you have different hypotheses possible. You can have equal versus not equal to, less than versus greater than or equal to, um, greater than or equal to, or sorry, uh, less than or equal to versus greater than, etc. Three cases, just like always.